Hi and welcome to another video for DiverseHawksbury.net. Over the weekend I went across to Schofields to a place called Limestone Cafe. On Friday night they had a night they simply called Maltese Night. It was a wonderful night of food and music and celebration. I also got to catch up with the chefs on what it means to them to be sharing such an important part of their culture with the rest of the community. Check it out. So it turns out the chef is just gorgeous and he's just basically force fed me this plate and I'm just, you know, you can tell I'm just resisting so hard. Oh. oh, that is beautiful. Thanks for having me today and something I noticed first off is that it was just, you know, I have experiences of growing up with Maltese friends at school and something, whenever I went over to their house, the first thing was like, do you need something to eat? Do you need something to drink? And that happened on Friday night. I just couldn't help but smile. Yeah. It's that Maltese hospitality, it's something that you guys specialise in. What do you, what do you get out of it and what do you feel you're giving to your customers? Yeah, like um, when they get together right, and you see them enjoying the Maltese food and the Maltese music, that's something that we we get very happy about it. That's it, it's something we yeah. grew up with, all the um, the, uh, the thing you're saying about the food, it's true, because even our grandmas, when we were used to go after school, the first thing is, what, what am I going what, what to make um, you to eat? And uh, so it's, it's much more even, it's the hospitality and also the type of food. The type of food is comfort food, yeah. you know, and people connect with that here, especially if um, they've been to Malta a long time ago and, and the, the smells and the, the taste of the food, it takes them back back to their nanas yes. taste, yeah. you know. 30 and years ago. Yeah. yeah. And the, the thing with Joe Up, Up, we thought it would be a good idea because it's food and music, which he does very well. Yes. Um, uh, and it was a great night, eh? And it was we're, wonderful. We're, and we're, yeah. we're looking forward to make more. Yeah. yeah. And it's good um, as a whole thing, not just the food. Yeah, it's it was it. like a... It's, it's like a get-together. When the world seems to shine Like you've had too much wine That's Amore Yeah, we had we had a couple of Aussies. Yeah. That no, night. We even um, now regarding the food, um, we're getting lots of Asians who yeah. live in Australia and um, Indians who come eat lunch and they try the rabbit, for the example, rabbit, yeah. and they love the rabbit. And it's so it's nice. It's, it's not just it's we're not just cooking Maltese food for Maltese people or people with Maltese heritage. We're cooking Maltese food for everyone. That's yeah. You know, so um, and it's getting it's getting popular. Um, even like I would say. Obviously, we have evening times. The majority are Maltese right. or Maltese head with Maltese heritage. But during the week um, and even weekends, breakfast and lunch, it's a mixture. Eh? I wouldn't say like yeah, yeah. we have lots of um, Australian people. Obviously, we have all the 
usual like breakfast stuff, all this mashed devils and eggs bennies and yeah. which are very popular in the morning too. Yeah. Then we throw in sometimes um, we call we have what we call it the Maltese legend, which yeah, is yeah, we make a Maltese twist. Yeah, it's like a bread which which he makes um, with poached eggs and yeah. bacon and Maltese sausages. It's, it's a big big man's breakfast mm. dish, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, so yeah, it's always like we're. It's not just about tradition and Maltese food because tradition and Maltese food it's more of a peasant food, so, you know. So it's especially now it's getting hotter. Maltese food tradition is more soups and stews and you know what I mean. So we try use Maltese ingredients. We, we and, change it. Yeah, we do like modern food, even modern Australian food with a Maltese twist. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, even um, the Aussies and everyone loves the pastitsis. That's it. Yeah, because the seas are always getting busier and busier. Yes. Um, I think the only one who can make the pasta seas. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, and um, yeah. yeah, and even the bread is getting yeah. popular. We have a, a, a nice wood, wood fired wood fired oven, which um, oh, amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, it it helps a lot with giving the authentic taste too, because that's how they used to bake bread in the old days, you know, and that's how they, they used to bake bread with with wood fire burning ovens and goes on more than there's not much there's not many left now yeah because now everything is more commercial. commercialized like they do big factories yeah and big bakeries and everything is it's machine, slowly dying down machine. everything is slowly dying yeah. down so, so it's, it's not easy to find like there are still um, it goes on not not there's only i think one or two which are still doing it the old old style but in malta i'm sure they're, they're, they're the, the big ones in hal Ormi and yeah. uh, they're still doing it the traditional way. And we're even introducing uh, the goods in Ftira as well. Yeah. It's like an old fashioned pizza oh. cooked in the um, the stone oven, what he's talking about. Yeah. And Is that what I tasted? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. picking yeah. up as well, like, uh, but it has to be pre ordered and. Um, yeah. Because the, traditionally it was done with. Um, bread dough. The, the bread dough, the trimmings of the dough with the baker head. So in the morning, if I had a leftover dough, it Not would flat, it yeah, flatten yeah. it out and top it with cheese and two, uh, either with cheese or another one with tuna and anchovies and fried onions was like a mixture. Okay. And then um, they used to bake them when the oven was cooling down, yeah. obviously. Oh, yeah. And then just sell them as a snack. I remember we used to buy a yeah. massive one like that, 25 cents when yeah. I was <laughs> like the, the guy who used to sell the bread used to come with his van and he always have had some leftovers, oh, yeah. you know. Pretty, to, pretty yeah. much they were all sold <laughs> before he got yeah. out of, yeah. his, of, his, yeah. of his bakery. <laughs> I've heard that Catherine Galea and Sarah Pickle have told me uh, right. sort of stories of the bread man as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big they thing. They got me curious about the rabbit. It's described elsewhere, I've seen, as a national dish. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah, yeah, rabbit. Um, Why rabbit? Well, because uh, everyone used to um, have their own rabbits at home. Yeah. And they used to, like. That's it. In, in, when they grow up. In the old days, um, like when my my grandparents were were young it was like during the war and people yeah. didn't have much money people had big families they used to have 10 12 kids at a time back in the in those days um yeah. and uh, to feed like meat was expensive obviously yeah. so they used to raise chicken, yeah, chicken chickens and rabbits, and rabbits. even a, a yeah. couple of goats Hatches. for the milk yeah and uh, so rabbit it came about i think like on a sunday I used to. I remember my my grandma used to do it every Sunday, rabbit, when I was young, which yeah. is uh, something because um, with the first you eat the spaghetti, yeah. um, with with the sauce, and then you eat the rabbit. It was it's like a. But we do it. You can also eat it. In Gozo, it was very popular. Also fried, fried yeah. in garlic. I used to do the opposite. I used to eat the rabbit first, first. <laughs> so it don't get full up and. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how does it take you back to your childhood then? How have are you both Australian born or Maltese no. born? I was born in Australia, mm -hmm. and I moved back when I was five. Uh -huh. And um, I was here 15 years ago. I worked here for one year, yeah. and Australia was always in my mind. Yeah. Like you can tell that there is something. Like I used to ask them questions about Australia. And they used to tell me, oh, we wish like we had a shop like this one. Mm. So 
that's when it started going in my head like I want to do something else. Yeah. Then there was my cousin Ben, Ben mm. and Yeah. And that's it. He told me, you want to do something here? And so I, I sold my business in Malta yeah. and I came here. And then yeah. I knew Joe yeah. from where we were, we were little. Okay. Like we used to be Al alter, alter boys together. Alter boys <laughs> together. <laughs> so and we actually have the same godfather. Yes, we do. Oh. <laughs> and um, yeah. Yeah. he just sent me a message. He was a head chef in Thailand for, for the last four years. Yeah. yeah. And he sent me a message. Oh, I heard this. I heard that. Yeah. And the next thing I told him was. Do you want to come and work with us? We're looking for a chef. <laughs> That's it. They told me you have to be here by the end of the month. It was yeah, it was, wow. it was um, the 12th of August. Yeah. We opened on the 15th and on the 29th he was, was here. here. Oh my gosh. He was here. So... so and then it's, there's this history and I've been here yeah. a year, yeah, let's year see. and a half almost. Year and a half. And, and, uh, well, what we do? 